Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, AJ Hogue, where AJ's more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's AJ with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Hi, I'm AJ Hogue, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. I am the father of the Effortless English system that trains you, that teaches you, that helps you, coaches you, you to speak English fluently. You speak English powerfully. You speak English with confidence. You speak English effortlessly. When you join, when you commit, commit, don't quit. When you commit to my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go to the website, EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Commit to my VIP program. You can try it for $1, just $1 for 10 days. So you can try it. And then after that, you stay a member. Month after month, you get new lessons. Join my VIP program. Commit. You'll notice that on social media, in our Gab groups, the people who are really succeeding and doing well, most of them are VIP members. Most of them. Not all, but most are VIP members. So I highly encourage you, commit to my VIP program. We have a new year coming. We're ending this year, 2019, last month. And then, of course, with the beginning of the year, many people at the new year, at the beginning of the year, like to make an extra effort to make an improvement. We make new goals for the new year. Well, start early. You can start early. Start now. Of course, we will be doing our speaking challenge. Uh, that'll be coming February 1st, I think. We'll do that. Today, we're going to talk about homeschooling. Homeschooling and specifically about the laws about homeschooling. Legal. I'm not giving you legal advice. I'm not a lawyer, but I'm going to, I'm going to show you a website a group, an organization that will help you, that will give you legal help, right, with the laws. Because every country has different laws about homeschooling. And even within the United States, inside the United States, each state has different laws. Now, homeschooling is legal in America. You can do it anywhere. But there are different requirements. Some states in America are very relaxed. You just you don't, you don't have to do, you just do what you want. And some states you have to like send a little report or something or keep some records. But, and then of course, each country is different too. So people ask me about, uh, the, you know, the legal advice, the legal situation for homeschooling in their country. And so I can't answer that question for every country. I don't know, but I can show you a website where you can get help and you can join this organization. I'm a member, even though my my children are just babies, so they're not school age yet, but I join anyway. I want to support this group. And they will help you. If you are a member, they will help you. They will help you with lawyers if you need help to be sure that you can homeschool your children. It's legal in many, many, many countries. Some countries it's not. You know, some evil countries like, like Germany, it's horrible. But uh, you got to fight. We got to keep fighting and make it legal. In Brazil, they're fighting right now. They're fighting in Brazil to get homeschooling legal. It's not legal yet, but they're fighting, fighting, fighting. And there's a chance they can do it. But, you know, you just got to keep fighting. It takes a while. The reason homeschooling is legal in the United States is because parents... For many, 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 many years, fought, right? They fought the government. They they fought the local governments, the state governments. They fought the national government. And they got organized and they continued to fight and to fight and to fight and to fight. And they got laws passed and they continue to fight so that homeschooling will stay legal. So you have to do that. In your country, maybe it's not legal yet, and you're just beginning the fight, right? In the United States, parents have been fighting for homeschooling for you know decades, tens of years. 
probably, I don't know, I'm thinking it probably started back in the 1970s, you know, 70s, I think 70s, 80s is when homeschooling really started becoming bigger in America. So, you know, now it's 30 years later, almost 40 years later. So these things don't happen immediately. So I know sometimes, for example, people in Brazil, you're frustrated, you're trying to get homeschooling legal, you have a president who wants it to be legal, but other people are, of course, fighting against it. So, you know, don't get upset if you don't have a victory immediately. It might not happen in one month, it might not happen in one year, but you keep fighting, you keep fighting, and maybe in three years or five years or whatever, you will get it. And this is true for every country. You've got to fight. In a country like Germany, it's going to take some time. You've got to get organized. You've got to fight and fight and fight and stay organized and don't quit. You have to commit and don't quit in this fight and you will eventually get victories and you'll win. We are live on YouTube. Now, I apologize for missing a few days of this show, this podcast. Uh, my mom was visiting. Of course, you know I have twin babies, which is super, super, super busy. It was the end of my mom's visit. I needed to take care of my mom and, you know, kind of help her here in Japan. She has never been outside of the United States. This was her first trip abroad, her first trip to a foreign country. And, uh, you know, she's in her 70s. <laughs> And her health's not great, so she needed a lot of help. So I, I apologize, but I just didn't have the time or the energy <laughs> to do the shows the last few days. I was getting really, really tired. Uh, but anyway, my mom went home. She's now back in the United States. And so here we are. I want to say thank you for the super chat from uh, Enrique is it Ribeiro? 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 Maybe Portuguese. I'm, I'm maybe pronouncing that right. Is it Hibiero? Anyway, I apologize if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, but the super chat, 790, uh, thank you very much. I appreciate That's a nice donation. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, let's, let me just, uh, I'll get to YouTube comments and questions, guys. I see you're saying hello and hello to all of you who are joining live now. Let's let me just show you this website though. Those of you who are curious, if you're listening just on audio, I'll give you the the name of the website so you can find it. So here it is. Let me sh uh, Those of you watching on video, I'll show you my screen. Okay. So this is the group that I recommend if you have any questions about homeschooling, especially about laws, the laws. But also they have some information about how to homeschool. They have a little bit of information about that also. But mostly this this group this organization, they're a nonprofit, they're a, they're a lot of lawyers, and they will help you with homeschooling questions. So it's called, let me give you the website name, hslda.org.org. .org. So it's just letters, H like uh, hamster, <laughs> S like, uh, I, I, they're supposed to be standard things, right? H like hamster, S like snake. L like uh, love, D like dog, and A like apple. H S L D A Homeschool Legal Defense Association. That's what the letters are for. Home School Legal Defense Association. H S L D A dot org dot o r g not com, not dot com, dot org, H-S-L-D-A dot org. You should go here if you have questions about the laws of homeschooling. If you're watching on video, you can see my screen. This is the, the main page, H-S-L-D-A dot org. If you are in the United States, if you live in the United States, you can see in the middle of the page over on the right, it says homeschool laws in your state homeschool laws in your state and you just there's a button it says find my state you can just click on the state let's click florida all right so oh there's so i clicked on the map and then i can click on and then it has a, it's a nice map of the united states with different colors green it says states requiring no notice so this means you can just homeschool you don't have to tell anybody you just do it 
Those are the best states for homeschooling. Texas and Alaska, those are great places. Indiana, these are all nice places for homeschooling. If it's kind of a light yellow, it says low regulation. Maybe there's some small thing. Maybe you send a letter to the government saying, I'm homeschooling. Or maybe you have to just keep some records just to show what you're doing. And then the red are the worst states, New York, Massachusetts, you know. All right, so that's if you're in the United States. Then you just click on that. If you click on one of the states, like click on Texas, then they'll give you the detailed information about the laws in Texas. And then you can join today. If you join, they then if you have any problem, if the government gives you any problems about homeschooling, if they send you a letter, if they try to tell you you, you can't do it, well, then you just... If you're a member, you just call this group, HSLDA. They will get you a lawyer and they will help you. They will fight for you. They're really great. This group is great. All right, but what if you're not in America? What if you're in another country? Well, back to the main page here, hslda.com. I mean, .org, 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 not .com, .org. Sorry, hslda.org. <laughs> So again, on the home page, you'll see that on the right at the top, it says quick navigation. And there's a menu, teach my kids, homeschool laws. Or right in the middle, international, international. And this is where you can, so we'll click this. We'll go to the international page. And then you see a list of a lot of countries here, a big list of countries with flags. And this is where you will get, number one, they will give you, the, you know, kind of basic information about laws in your country. What are the laws about homeschooling? Is it, can you do it? Can you not do it? Not sure. So let's click, I'm in Japan. Let's click Japan. And we'll see an example. So we go, here's the Japan page. Number one, headlines. They give you news about what's happening with homeschooling and the laws of homeschooling in Japan. And it's a good situation in Japan. Homeschooling on the rise in Japan. It's becoming popular in Japan. More popular. More people are doing it. Uh, it's, it's a pretty good situation here. And then it says country information. Legal status. Is it, is it legal? It says the law is vague. It's not clear. But in general, it is you can do it. It says homeschoolers are mostly left alone. So you, if you homeschool in Japan, the government doesn't bother you. You can just do it. No problem. And it says the business community, businesses, the big businesses in Japan, they support homeschooling. They like it. That's good. And then, this is also great, they have local contact information. Uh, here in Japan, it says there's an associate, there's a Christian group. Association of Homeschoolers in Christ. So if you specifically want Christian, you can. There's another group that's more just general homeschooling. It's called, I don't know, CHEA. I don't know what that stands for. But anyway, another group. And then Homeschool Support or uh, Association. So there are three groups in Japan for homeschooling. And they have the contact name. They have a phone number. They have websites and email for each group. So you can find your local group. Let's find. Let's look at Brazil because Brazil, there's a fight happening right now for homeschooling. So here you go. There's a homeschooling group in Brazil. It says the number of families choosing to homeschool is growing rapidly, growing quickly in Brazil. Homeschooling homeschoolers are working together to make get good laws passed. It's a big fight though. Okay, and then there's the Brazilian National Association for Homeschooling. They have an email. They have a Facebook page. There you go. So this is what I recommend, guys. And then you can even says donate to help international homeschoolers. You can donate money to this group because they're helping to fight in all these different countries for homeschooling. So this is what you do. If you have any questions, so I know some of you are worried, like, uh, I don't know about homeschooling. Is it legal in my country? Can I do it? Well, this is what you do. You go to hslda.org. You find your country. Click and get the information. 
contact the local groups and you can get some help. You get organized. Help them fight for better laws. And then back to the homepage again. Some of you have questions about um, just how to do homeschooling. It says, you can homeschool. Go now. So we'll click that. They might have some links about how to get... See, it says, let's get started. They have an interview. They have a little sample curriculum. You know, just they have just some very general advice. They have here some links to curriculum, meaning like programs, homeschool programs you can buy. There are a lot of them, many. This is just a few. They have some that are specifically Christian. A lot of Christians do homeschooling. There's some that are not Christian, that are you know, what we call secular, non-religious. So there's lots of choices, in other words. And they got, they've just got a lot of good general information here. So if you want, if you're just getting started, if you're thinking about homeschooling, then this is another good section to check out. So it's just a good website for getting started, finding out the legal uh, issues, etc. <laughs> yeah, Pino Jr. says, Thank God schools in Brazil are infested by leftists. I know, they're infested. That's why people are doing it in uh, America, too. That's why you need to homeschool, guys. You don't want those people doing bad stuff to your kids, and they will do bad stuff. So there you go. I you, know, you all know that I highly, highly, highly recommend homeschooling. I will be homeschooling my own children, my two children. They're just babies now, but as they become older, we will be homeschooling. They will not go to school. They will learn at home. And there's nothing to fear about this. This is wonderful. It makes your family stronger. The, you will give them a better education. As Junior just said, uh, Pino said, the, the, in most countries now, in most countries, the school system is run by crazy leftist Marxists. They're, they're crazy. They're going to teach your kid weird stuff about sex, you know, sex education. They're going to push uh, all kinds of crazy stuff. They're going to push kind of a Marxist, leftist, political stuff. They're going to push all kinds of crazy, terrible stuff. And, and also, the education sucks, okay? The actual, just the basic math and reading and science, it's, it's not good. The quality is low, okay? It's crap. Your, your, your child is in a class with 30 other children or more. Many of those children are distracted. Many of the teachers, many of the teachers are not very good. Some are good, but many are not. But even the good teachers, they're, they're stressed out. They have a lot of stress because they have to follow all these rules from the government or even private schools. They have all these rules. It's hard for the good teachers to do a good job. You know, there are a few good teachers, but it's very hard for them. And many of them leave. Many of them quit and leave because it's too difficult. Because the system is bad. So the level of education, you know, it's, it's called dumbing us down. It makes your kids stupid. Um, they, you know, you can look. Look at a, look at the, if you can find like a curriculum or find some books that from like 100 years ago, 100 years ago. What, what were children learning 100 years ago? Let's just pick an age, 10-year-olds, 10 years old. 100 years ago, what were 10-year-olds reading? What were they studying and reading at home, maybe in school, but often at home? If you look, you'll find that it was quite an advanced level compared to now. 10-year-olds now in school, they're reading garbage. Their reading, the reading level is much, much, much lower. The intellectual level is much, much, much lower. Kids a hundred years ago, they were more, they were challenged more. The education was much, much, much better. And so this is another reason to homeschool because you can help your children get a better education. They can read more interesting things they can read uh more difficult things 
They, you can challenge them more uh, to think. <clears throat> this is also true with math. It's true with science. Another benefit, of course, when you teach your own children, you love them. The school doesn't love your child. You're lucky if they care at all. They certainly don't love your child. And you can be very individual when you homeschool. So if you have one child, you know, every child's different. Every person's different. We all know this. And some, it's very normal, very, very normal that maybe you remember yourself when you were little. But it's normal for a child that in some area, they may be very fast, right? Maybe they're good at reading. Maybe reading is easy for them. And they maybe they're kind of advanced reading. But maybe math, maybe some math, maybe fractions, right? For example, there might be some something in math that right now for them is a bit difficult. So they're a little slower than other kids. They need extra time to learn this to learn fractions or to learn multiplication, whatever. That's totally normal. There's nothing wrong with it. But in the school, they will feel stupid. In the school, they will tell you something's wrong because your child is behind. Your child is going more slowly than the other kids. So what? It doesn't matter. Okay, They just need a little extra time. They're still going to learn it. So if you're at home, you're teaching your own child at home, there's no pressure. There's no stress. You just you just spend spend a few more months focusing on fractions, for example, helping them learn fractions. I mean, you, you try some different methods, some different ways to help them understand the fractions. It's no big deal. It's just so what? They need a little extra time for that topic, and you can do it at home. They don't feel any stress. They don't feel stupid. They're not stupid. It's just that they need a little extra time for some reason. And they will learn it, no problem. right? But in school, right? There's there, everybody follows the same schedule. So in school, there's no extra time. If they are having trouble with something like fractions, well, then the, the teacher just keeps going. They don't care. They have to teach all of these kids. So your child gets behind then. And this creates stress and pressure, and then maybe they never really learn the fractions well. They don't learn this topic well because they didn't get the extra time they needed. Now, the opposite is also true. The opposite is also true, that your child will, in some areas, go faster. In some areas, they'll be better. Uh, maybe it's physical, like physical education, right? Maybe they're really fast and strong and they need a lot of uh, physical activity. Uh, maybe it's reading, maybe it's science. Maybe they love exploring the natural world. But they go faster than normal in some times. And then what happens? Again, in school, they get bored then. They get bored because they already know it. They're, they're going faster. They need new challenges. They need to go faster. They need to do new things. They need to move to something else. They want to learn something else. But... No, in school, they have to follow the same schedule. So they get bored because, oh, I already know this. Uh, they're, ha they're, they're, they're reading stuff that's too easy or whatever, right? So then they get bored, which is also bad. They learn, oh, learning is boring. Again, at home, it's not a problem. At home, at some time, if your child's going very fast in some subject, some topic, it doesn't matter. Just keep just do something next. Go, go to the next thing or give them something more difficult. You can completely customize, right? And if you have if you have two children or three children or five children, they can all be going different speeds. It's not a big deal. It's no problem. And so the child can always be enjoying their learning. They're always getting enough challenge, but not too much challenge. They never feel stressed out about learning. Learning is always an enjoyable, interesting experience for them. Oops, because of that. So just educationally, forget even the political stuff, which is completely crazy now, but just in on the education side, homeschooling is so, so much better. Much better. So anyway, hslda.org. Don't be afraid of it. Don't get nervous about the laws. Don't get nervous about how to do it. It's all quite simple. Just 
go to that website, hslda.org, and uh, you can get detailed information, and you can you can get contact information locally, wherever you live, so you can get more of your questions answered, nothing to be worried about. All right, why don't we go to questions and comments now? Yeah, here's Sarah H. Sarah PH says, I've been your subscriber since I started my TESOL teaching career. Ah, okay, so this is an English teacher. 100% agree with you. I'm currently working in a public school and have realized how my children are declining. Right. I know. And, you know, like I said, there are very good teachers who are, uh, and it tends to be the newer ones often, uh, that are in the school system. They go into the school system with uh, with a very good heart wanting to help. But then, you know, then they, they just, the school system just destroys those teachers with all these rules, with all this stress, with all this horrible stuff. And those teachers tend to become very, very tired over time. And most of them leave. Uh, so it's, it's not, I, I don't hate individual teachers. I'm a teacher too, but, uh, but the system is terrible. It's bad for the teachers too. Hey, Pino Jr. Again, my wife and I are planning on having our first kid in 2020. Congratulations. Good job. Can't wait to teach them how to become an independent learner, him or her, right? Good luck to you. And uh, yeah, I hope it all works out great. Hope you uh, have good news very soon. Yeah, Mimo Nemo says, and this is a good point, I myself experienced the same situation in college. Yeah, exactly. It's not, it's at all levels, right? Even at the college level, you're still stuck in a class. You're in a class with, you know, 20 other people, 30 other people. In big schools, big colleges, you might be in a class with 100 people. So, again, obviously, the teacher cannot focus on one student, just one student. It's impossible. So, they go at one speed, and if you are fast then you get bored very quickly. If you're having some trouble, then you get stressed out, right? So it's a bad situation. Only if you're in the perfect middle <laughs> is it good, right? It's much better to be an independent learner. Now, of course, at the college level, you can learn independently. You're an adult now. You can become your own boss of learning. For the younger kids, the parents need to do it, or at least... The parents need to guide it. Uh, you know, and with homeschooling, another advantage is that the children become independent learners much faster. You know, it's very common for homeschool children, maybe age 12, let's say, by age 12, something like that, 12 to 14, to become almost totally independent. So with homeschooling, of course, with very young children, as a parent, you do most, you have to guide them a lot, right? You have to coach them and guide them a lot. You have to teach them directly a lot more when they're five years old, when they're seven. But the cool thing is, the great thing, by the time they get older, as they become nine, 10, 11, 12 years old, they become very independent. They get used to the idea of being independent learners. So you don't have to constantly be teaching them and watching them. You can just tell them, okay, read this today. Read this and do this. And you're there to, you can answer questions. You're there to talk to them and guide them and help them. But you, it's actually not a huge amount of work. You can be quite relaxed because by that age, your child has learned how to learn independently, how to read how to figure out problems themselves first. So it becomes easier and easier and easier as your child gets older. 
because your child becomes more and more and more independent. By high school age, 15, something like that, they should be 95% independent learners at that point. You're maybe giving them just saying, I need you, you need to learn this and this and this, but <clears throat> you can give them a lot of freedom and flexibility as they get to that age. That's what we want. We want independent learners because then they will learn for life. Pino Jr. again with good, lots of good questions. Do you think this happens by design or are the governments don't know effect, other effective ways to teach our kids? It's by design. They're trying to make your child stupid and easy to control. The whole school system is designed to make children easy to control, to create adults who are easy to control, to push their political agenda. Yeah, like Siracha is a good teacher saying, I'm looking how to make my class fun and make them enjoy. Exactly. And, you know, as you become, if you're a more independent teacher, independent teachers can obviously do a much better job because you're free to do what you want. So if you're a good teacher, if you have a good heart, if you're tired of teaching in the schools, then I recommend, you know, maybe open your own school or some other program. Become independent. Leave the school system. Start your own little business of teaching, helping you know kids or adults. And then you can do great things. You can really have a good time and be more effective. You don't have the government or even the private school controlling you. So, you know, you need maybe get experience first teaching in schools if you need it. But when you start to get tired of all of that, I recommend try. You can do it part time first. And then eventually maybe you make your own little business of teaching. Vladimir says, school is kind of free, right? Kind of, <laughs> not really, but yes, I know what you mean. As we say in Russia, free cheese is only in a mouse trap. So that's why we have to teach our children by ourselves. Indeed, yes. And of course, we all know it's not really free because you pay huge amounts of money in taxes to pay for that garbage. But what can, it's hard. We can't do much about that right now. But exactly. People think it's free because they're not paying directly. It's indirectly you're paying. Uh, but exactly, it's, it's, it's just not worth much. You have to be careful about things that are offered for free. Yeah, Nirvana 4K, about a, a pretty cool movie. I watched a movie called Captain Fantastic about a father who homeschooled his kids. It's wonderful. I highly recommend it. It's a very nice movie. It's got a Hollywood ending, of course. They have to always do that. But I'd say that 80% of the movie is really great. And it's about a father who does homeschooling. It's cool. It's called Captain Fantastic. Captain Fantastic. Nice, nice little movie. Okay, Ilana Khan says, what can you do if your child doesn't like to read or listen to books, especially when homeschooling based on reading? Well, you got to find a way to make reading fun and interesting. I don't know the age of this child. Uh, that also, of course, it depends. But, um, you know, one of the main things is to use something called free voluntary reading. It's Dr. Krashen's uh, term. But it basically means you let let your child choose the books. I know in general, you know, you, you, you have some books you want them to read. But in the beginning, if your child like doesn't like reading, then maybe for a while, just relax and let them choose. So maybe comic books, sometimes comic books, because they have pictures. Your child might like comic books. It's called manga is kind of the Japanese style, but they have in many languages still. So maybe comic books, maybe manga, uh, things like this. You might let your child go to a library, go to a bookstore, 
and let your child look around and let them choose instead of you trying to push a certain, oh, I, let's read this or you must read that. Even for very young children, you can take them to a bookstore or library in the children's section and say, let them look at the pictures and let them and just say, oh, what, what looks good to you? What do you want to read? Even if you're reading to them. So this is what I recommend. You got to get them choosing things. And even at, uh, even at older ages, like even as they're getting older, again, you can do comic books and things like that. And as they start to get interested, then you can start to introduce other books that you want them to read. You got to get them kind of hooked on reading first. How do you teach your child decimals if they can't understand it? Okay, here's the deal. I'm not I can't I'm not going to answer this specific question cuz you could ask this question about anything. How do you teach fractions? How do you Guys, there's the internet. Okay? Just do a search how to teach decimals to children. <laughs> okay? And you're going to find a lot of choices and just read through, you know, pages and pages of search results. Don't use Google, use DuckDuckGo or something. And you can find, there's like, uh, you know, Khan Academy. But there are many, many, many different websites for educational websites that teach math, that teach science. There are many programs you can just buy. Like I said, you this that website, HSLDA. They have a, they have a page of links of called curriculum. It means you buy a program and it teaches decimals. It teaches fractions. It teaches everything you need. So if you're not sure about how to teach something specific, that's what you do. As your child gets older, you don't even need to teach yourself. They can just read it and figure it out themselves. They can read it. They can watch videos, which you can help them find. And you can watch them also. And you can help them. That's all you need to do. So you don't don't panic, okay? Like, oh, how do I teach fractions? How do I teach decimals? How do I teach biology? Okay, just relax. There's there's so much available, cheap or free. So much, okay? You don't have to have everything in your head yourself, okay? You don't need to be an expert on every topic. And, you know, teachers at schools, I'll tell you a secret, most of them are not experts, okay? They don't know their topic very well. They're just following a textbook. That's all they're doing, okay? They're not, you know, the people teaching your children in school, they're not the smartest people in the world usually. I'm being kind, <laughs> okay? A lot of them are quite stupid, okay? They just follow the book. That's all they're doing. You can do that too. You can find a better book though. Don't use the book they use. You can find better resources online you can find better books okay so you don't have to be an expert in everything if you're weak in math don't worry about it okay there's a ton of stuff that you can find huge in number huge amount you have a lot of resources available yeah like sarah ph says youtube has cool math videos too yes th there's just so much videos and books and other things whole pr full programs it's very, very easy to do. Dilshad must have missed what I said earlier. If your babies are older, will they go to school? Hell no. <laughs> no. My babies will not go to school. <sighs> yeah, and like, see, this is also good. Sarah says, I use audiobooks for young learners. Helps to improve their pronunciation and listening abilities. Exactly. You can also use audiobooks. You can do both. You can play the audiobook and they can kind of look at, the, especially a picture book for young kids. They can kind of look at the pictures as they listen. And then, you know, it's a combination. You can read to them yourself, of course. You can 
read the book and show them the pictures and you're reading to them, they're listening to you. And then, of course, as they get older, more and more, they can also just read themselves. Uh, so it's uh, you can mix all of these. You can do some audiobooks. You read to them sometimes, and then they read sometimes. And it changes as they get older. And it also depends on each child. This is the other cool thing, as I said. You can customize for each child. Maybe one of your children, maybe one likes audiobooks, especially for a while, you know. Right now, they really like listening. And maybe another child prefers to just read silently by themselves. So you can do both. You don't have to force them, right? Just get them to love reading. That's the number one thing. If I have to pick, guys, for homeschooling, get them to love reading. That's your main job as a parent, as a homeschooling parent. Get your child to love reading. Get them hooked on reading and reading, reading a lot. Because that's the key to independent learning. If they love to read, that's 90% right there. Okay, yes, there's some math and stuff, okay? But loving to read, that's how they will continue to learn their whole life. So that's the that should be your number one focus as a parent, homeschooling, reading. Yeah, like Jay Pillai says, uh, if you homeschool your child and you aren't a teacher, you probably can access resources to help them. Right, that's what I was saying. A huge amount of resources. Guys, these teachers in schools, they're, they don't have any big special skills, okay? They're just following a textbook. Any person can do that. They don't have any special skills. The, the main special skill they might have is it's called classroom management they know how to the good ones know how to manage 30 children in a room and keep them controlled that's the main skill they have that maybe you don't have but unless you have 30 children most of you don't you don't need that skill right i'm hoping you know how to control you know have good discipline and rules with your own children that's all you need Exactly. When our Islamic channel says, when it comes to homeschooling, parents have control over what their kids are learning. But at school, we don't know what they are learning. Exactly. You don't know what they're teaching your kids. A lot of it's not good. And if you, if you are religious, like for example, you're, you're, you're Muslim, you're Christian, you're Sanatana Dharma, Dharmi, you're Buddhist, whatever, I guarantee they are teaching your children a lot of things that go against your religion. A lot of, actually, I'd say a lot of truly evil things, a lot of truly bad things. So if you are serious about your religion, you better, you should homeschool. However, even if you're not religious, if you just want your children to have, to be good children, you want them to have good character, to be virtuous, good people, and you want them to be very good in academic, you want them to be independent learners so they grow up, learning for their whole life, which is a, a very important skill for, for life, for success in life, for anything, including jobs. Again, homeschool is the best. Homeschooling is the best. In California, you need teaching credentials if you want to homeschool your kids. I'm not sure that's true. I don't think that's true. We'll click. I'm going to find out right now. So this is why you need to check out this website, guys. Don't just assume. And you can get legal help. Okay, let's see. Instruction must be in English. Instruction must be capable of teaching. What does that mean? A private satellite school is one in which the majority of the instruction is provided at home. The PSP must meet all the requirements for running a private school, which are under homeschooling as a home. Yeah, well, maybe it is actually kind of bad in California. Huh. Anyway, it's a little complicated, it looks like, in California. Yeah, you're, I think you're actually right. I think I'm wrong. I think Jay's right.
Oh, there may be other options, though. You may have other choices. Okay, so see, sometimes it's complicated. Like, I think that you don't have to do that. There may be other ways in California. But that's why I, if you live in California, you want to homeschool someplace complicated like that, I recommend join this group, HSLDA. Join, and then they can help you. They can answer your specific questions. So I, I would do that if I lived in California. Or I would move. <laughs> if you're serious about homeschooling, if you live in a, if you're in America and you live in a state like California, just leave. I, that's what I would do. I would not live in California. But, but anyway, there may be other ways to do it, more a little more independently. But it's a little complicated. The rules in California, so join this group and get their help so you can ask questions and figure out how to do it. You can still do it. You can figure it out. But California is evil. California is a terrible, terrible, terrible place in terms of the government. They are left-wing, Marxist, crazy, evil bastards. Which is why all the California internet companies are so terrible, like YouTube and um, Facebook. You know, they're all, all the censorship, all the crazy stuff. California is not a great place. <laughs> it's beautiful country. The countryside's beautiful, but... The, the government is horrible. The culture is terrible. Okay. Oh, hey, Sarah. Welcome. Good to see you joining. Yeah, so Sarah, Sarah PH, different Sarah, says, I like to keep audiobooks in the car. See, this is a great idea. Every time we go for a ride, I put them in. I keep the kids busy, engaged, and they ask comprehension questions at the end. See, that's really cool, right? So if you're, if you're driving around, especially a place like America, where usually you have to do a lot of driving, put in an audio book and just play it. You're enjoying it too. You don't, a lot of this too, guys, is, 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 a, is a little bit of leadership, okay? Um, you know, if you tell your kids, we are scared. We're now we are going to study and you're very serious and you make it boring and uh, then they kind of will react in a negative way, maybe. But if you're just very casual and relaxed about it, if it seems natural, if you are doing it also. So like Sarah PH, she just puts in an audiobook while they drive around. They go to the grocery store or wherever. She plays an audiobook. You don't say anything. You don't say, now we are going to learn. You just put the audiobook in and Hey, let's listen to this. This is kind of, I like, this looks like an, this sounds like an interesting book. This looks interesting. You put it in, you play it. It becomes a habit. Just, it's just part of your family life is that you play audiobooks when you drive around or at home. It becomes part of your family life to do reading time. This is something I recommend. Have a reading time in your family. Maybe you can start small, like 20 minutes, 15 minutes, and then make it longer, longer, longer. And it's, you call it free reading time or just reading time, whatever. And it's your whole family. That means you too. You, your husband and your wife also. And everybody chooses their own book. So your child chooses the book they want. Okay? You don't force them. You must read this. No. So especially during that reading time, they can choose a comic book, anything they want. But you also read. It's quiet reading time. So everybody in the family in the same room, you sit down and you read together. You're showing them. You're not just telling them. You're showing them because you also are reading a book yourself. You sit there and you read. If they need help, they can, you know, of course, come ask you, Mom, what's this word? Dad, what is this? But you are showing them. You're doing it also. Your husband or your wife is doing it also. It's the whole family is reading. And this becomes a habit. And you make it longer. As they get older, it can become 30 minutes, an hour. You know, it could, become, it could become very long. And it's something you're all doing together. It's part of family life. It's not you forcing them. I'm the parent. I'm the teacher. Now you must read. No, it's like, hey, let's all enjoy reading. Reading is part of our life in this family. See, if, if, as you, if you have that attitude as you do homeschooling more, if they, you give that feeling to them, it it they they will in, it, they will see it as enjoyable they will see it as natural they will see it as good okay let's see 
Yeah, like Ilana Khan says, independent learning leads to children growing up as independent and thinking citizens. That's exactly right, and that's why the government doesn't like it. <laughs> they don't want independent thinking citizens. They want mental slaves. But anyway, this is true. This is a big advantage of homeschooling. Probably this is the reason that government doesn't like the idea. Ah, she just said what I was thinking. Yes, that's exactly why they don't like it. They want the opposite. They want you, they want your children to grow up and be mental slaves who believe what they are told on the, from TV, who do what they are told, who don't think about anything. Yeah, Jay says, California's way too expensive and uh, a, 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 I don't know, screw their rules and regulations. I agree. California is just not a good quality of life now. I, I, I would not recommend living there. Just leave. I used to live there. I lived in San Francisco, but I'm out. I would recommend just leaving. That's if you live in a place, if you're in America and you live in a state like California or New York, where the homeschool laws are very, very, you know, not good. They're tough. They're bad. They're complicated. Just leave. Get a job and leave. Go to a different state. You know, move to Texas. Yeah, so Dalal says homeschooling is not legal in our country. Yet. Always use the word yet. You've got to fight for it, guys. It didn't happen magically in America. Okay? It didn't happen magically. It happened because a lot of parents were fighting and fighting and fighting and organizing and organizing for a long, long time. They continue to do that. Right? The, there's, the fight is still happening. You know, like we see in California, it's not a good situation. It's legal, but it's very complicated. So... The homeschooling parents in California, they have to fight. They got to organize and fight or leave and go to a better state. But if, if your whole country, you know, it's, it's different in America because it's state by state. But most places, it's the whole country. So if your whole country is bad, then, well, then you got to fight. You got to organize and fight and fight and fight and fight and fight. And it might take a while. And sometimes it's, these fights can go a long time, but... Even if it's not helping your children, maybe it helps your grandchildren in the future. So you should still fight. <laughs> Ahmad says, you're challenging my life in a positive way, little by little. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you, Ahmed. Thank you. Lots of uh, Brazilians watching right now. Is it Kaique Lima says hello. Hugs from Brazil. Evaldo from Brazil. Lots of Brazil. Hello from Texas. See, Sad Carlos here lives in a great state for homeschooling. Texas is fantastic. Texas overall has a kind of a, a culture of being more free. Uh, compared to, say, California. So if homeschooling is very important to you, yeah, go to a state like Texas if, if you live in America because Texas has fantastic... I mean, I really, there's no laws. You just do it. I don't think you have to do anything. Hawaii is pretty good. If I lived in the United States, I'd probably live in Hawaii because it's easy to homeschool in Hawaii too. I would not live in California. Yeah, like Sarah says again, Sarah PH, I agree with Ilana. Real education is what sets humans apart from sheep. Be the shepherds, not the sheep. Very well said. Yes, very well said. And this is, for me, this is the number one thing. Dilshad says, in homeschooling, we pay attention to our family more. It's, you, it creates a stronger family. That is the number one reason for me. Yes, the education's better for homeschooling. Absolutely. Number two, yes, you avoid the crazy political stuff. 
But for me, the best advantage, the best benefit is your family will be stronger. You will be closer to your children. Your children will be closer to you. More trust, more love, more connection as they get older. Your children will be closer to each other. If you have more than one, brothers and sisters, they will be closer to each other for life, for life. These benefits are for, your, for, for all of life, your life and their lives. So that's number one. It, it's a, it creates a very good, strong family, much stronger. When you send your child away to school six hours, seven hours a day, it weakens your family. It makes your family weaker. You may not notice this when they're little. When they're seven, oh, it seems like everything's fine. But when they become teenagers, when they get to middle school and high school, if they've been going to schools, that's when then the relationship Parents and children becomes weaker and can have a lot of problems. We all know this. It's mostly from schools. Homeschooling teenagers, if you talk to homeschooling families, yes, they're teenagers, so they're kind of still crazy a little bit. But overall, and I've noticed this myself, that teenagers who are homeschooled, they keep a good relationship with mom and dad. They keep a closer, more trusting good relationship with their parents compared to teenagers in schools who many times the relationship breaks completely or becomes quite difficult. They become disrespectful to their parents. They don't trust their parents. There's all this fighting all the time. You can avoid that by homeschooling. You can avoid most of it. I mean, not all of it. Okay, They're still teenagers, but you can avoid most of the problems. You can keep that close family, all you know, and into adulthood even as they become adults. That for me is that's why I'm doing it. Number one, also the other reasons, but this is number one for me. Yeah, like Tom ninety with a good comment about reading, and this is true for kids. It's true for you as an individual. Hi, Coach. Good to see you. I didn't like reading, but since one month ago, I've read every day, and now I really like it. Reading leveled books are called graded readers. Thanks for the motivation, the power of reading. Excellent, Tom. Exactly. The more you read, the more you start to enjoy it. And when you're doing it in a foreign language, like you're doing it in English, then it also, choosing the right level is important. If it's too difficult, then the reading can feel stressful, even in your own language, actually. That's the same. That's also true. It's true for children. So if your child's trying to read things that are too difficult for them now, <clears throat> they start to feel, oh, this reading is it's too, it's stressful. Well, that's why it's fine to let them read easier things for a while. And it's the same with topics. This is another thing for you and also for kids that when you choose books about topics or stories that you love that are interesting to you, well, then, of course, it becomes more and more enjoyable. If you try to force yourself to read things that you don't really like, which happens in school a lot, then reading, again, becomes stressful or boring. So it's a lot of it. It's just so much of it is just choosing interesting things at a good level for you or for your child. And then there will become a natural enjoyment of reading. It just develops with some time. And once you have it, or once your child has that enjoyment, they have it for life, and that's what's great. Yeah, like Nirvana 4K says, effortless English is kind of homeschooling. We're improving a lot more than we did at schools. It is homeschool. We could call it homeschooling. It's with adults. We usually just say independent learning, but essentially, yes, you're learning at home. You're learning English at home. You are doing homeschooling. You're adults now, but you're still doing homeschooling, right? Or independent learning. I think independent learning is a better, is a more uh, accurate, right? Is a is a actually a better phrase to use. But homeschooling is the popular one for kids. But we're not really doing school at home. We're, we're helping our children. We're training our children to become independent learners. And then as adults, it doesn't stop. This is the key thing. There's no graduation. 
You never graduate. You never finish learning. It's your whole life, right? This idea of graduation, I don't like it. It gives the idea that, oh, school is just for kids and then you're done. No, you never stop. You never stop. Your whole life, you're learning. Saif says, is reading novels good or not? It's great if you like it. If you enjoy reading novels, yes, read novels, read novels, read them. Yeah, see, this is cool. So I agree about relationships and the reading, both. I was unable to homeschool my ch kids, but I'll help my children with their kids. Exactly. You can help your grandkids if you didn't do it, if you already, your kids grew up already. It's okay, mm. but you can help your grandkids. If if your children decide to do homeschooling, you can help them with their with your grandkids. <laughs> Delal says, what makes Effortless English Show funny is the kids' laughter. You can hear the babies in the, the next room, huh? Not always laughing, sometimes crying. But yes, my little babies make some noise. <laughs> yeah, Saif again with a nice comment. Reading should be included in daily life activities in every family. Exactly. I'll tell you my plan. We'll see what happens. But my plan will be with my kids. I'll. I'll have a couple hours a day. That's all. Two, maybe three when they're older. But in the beginning, two, where we maybe do more organized learning, where I'm maybe teaching them a little more directly. The rest of the day will be relaxed, more independent learning, exploring, reading, just for enjoyment. I like to go to coffee shops and I do, do work or read or study. So I'll go take them to the coffee shop with me. We'll bring books. Maybe I'll study Japanese while they read books. And we'll just be there together. And I'll help them when they need help. But I want to encourage them to become more independent so they can sit quietly and read a book or do something else, learning, while I also am studying. I also want to show them this example that I'm 51 or I'm 50, whatever, <laughs> at the time, and that, oh, dad is also, he's still learning. Dad's still studying. He's, he's in his, you know, he's, he's his old guy, and he's still, uh, he's still trying to learn a language. He's still reading books. So I want them to see by example that, oh, yeah, you always do it. You're always reading. You're always learning. You never stop. I'll, I'll show them, you know, people like Steve Kaufman, who's, you know, 73, I think, and he's, Learning three languages, right? So that ah, you keep you keep learning, you keep your mind sharp, you keep learning. Okay, I totally disagree with this comment. Celebi says, "What about social life?" I'm a teacher at school. Social life is decreasing day by day. That's right. I think school is a good place to become socialized. I disagree. I think school is the worst possible place for socialization. You do not want your child to learn from other kids' social skills. They don't know social skills. Other kids don't know. Where do other kids learn social skills? From TV? From horrible media? Ugh. You want children to learn social skills from you, right? From adults, maybe, if, maybe from your parents too, from their grandparents, from... Your family. Family is the best place to learn social skills with their brothers and sisters, with mom and dad, with uncles and aunts, with cousins, with grandparents. That's the best way to learn social skills. You can also, of course, you know, they can do other activities. Yeah, you know, like my nieces and nephews in uh, America, they, two of them, go. they do jujitsu. They go to jujitsu class uh, three times a week, I think. Uh, they, one of them does dance classes. You know, there's all these sports. There's plenty of things to do, if, you know, for social. But the best social skills are learned from adults and older kids who are, 
you know, well behaved, <laughs> but especially adults, that's, that's where they learn it from the family. Family is where they need to learn social skills. The problem of technology, well, don't give them a phone. It's easy to solve that problem. Don't give your child a phone. Don't give them an iPad. Don't let them watch, sit in front of a TV all day. I think don't give them a TV at all. No TV. Yeah, yeah, you control that. You're the parent. So none of that. Don't let them do that. Make them go outside and play. Make them play indoors, whatever. But uh, yeah, you can, you can, social skill, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. Prison is not a good place to learn social skills. And schools are prisons for kids. You, as an adult, would you want to go to a prison and learn social skills? No. <laughs> what kind of skills do you learn in a prison? Well, you learn bullying, right? Or being a victim. You learn, you know, that you're under control all the time. It's not, it's not a good place for that. Felicia says, uh, you're right. For getting a job, we have, but for getting a job, we have to show our academic degree. Okay, well, you're talking about college level now. Okay, so you're talking about college, about the question, do, should you go to college, university, or not? That just depends. Okay, that depends. Um, some jobs require a college degree, right? Let's just say an, something obvious like uh, a medical doctor. You have to get a college degree. You have to go to medical school. It can't be avoided. So if you really want to be a doctor, then yeah, you have to do it. But you can still be homeschooled until then. You can be homeschooled until college. You can also, for your undergraduate, the first four years, you can do very independently, maybe like an online college or things like that. You can do things are called CLEP tests. You can take a test. So you actually get credit for a lot of college classes. You never have to attend them. <laughs> um, but yes, eventually, if you want to be a medical doctor, you will eventually have to go to a, a university and get the degree and go to medical school. Okay. But that's, it's just, that's just, you have to decide that individually. It depends on what job you want. If you want to be an entrepreneur and start your own business, don't waste time going to college. You don't need to go to college. You don't need it. You don't need university to start a business. You don't need college to start a business. It's wasting time. You're wasting time. So it just it's so right, it just depends. Which job do you are you trying to get? But that's only for the university level. Everything under you don't need. You can do homeschooling. All right. We're about finished for today. Okay, uh, I'm getting a request for a topic about public speaking. All right, maybe I'll do it tomorrow. I'll think about it. I'm not sure. But I'll talk about public speaking again in the future. That's, I like that one. Yeah, and I'll, we'll end with Pino Jr., the last comment. Kind of answering about the social skills similar to what I just said. I think you can put your kids in extracurricular activities, such as jujitsu classes, sports in general, music classes, gardening groups, dance classes, arts. Exactly. The community, right? That's real social skills is you get your children involved in their community, right? Involved in their family and involved in your local community. The same kinds of things adults do socially, right? Exactly. Sports, hobbies, clubs, organizations. Your child can volunteer, maybe. You know, do some kind of volunteer work. That's quite nice for them to learn, to, to maybe help people in some little way. There's, there's countless things you can do. And, uh, and the, what's cool about these things 
is it's a mix of ages. Socialization's better for kids if they are in a mixed age group with adults, older kids, kids the same age, and kids who are younger all together. It's a natural community or a natural family. All everybody's the same exact age is very, very, very unnatural. So it's really cool. Like, like again, my uh, my niece who does jujitsu classes. So she's in a she's in a kids class at her jujitsu gym, but they have different. So it's different ages. But then they they have uh, some assistant instructors and instructor. The assistant instructors are like teenagers, I think, maybe early twenties. The head instructor is you know an adult, full adult. And, of course, they also have adult classes there. And she's around all of these people socializing with all these different age groups at the jiu-jitsu school, the gym, um, which is a much better situation. It's also a super positive, very disciplined uh, environment. So the social skills are excellent, right? It's not all the nonsense you get in schools because the instructor is very good and he doesn't... uh, you know, they're serious. People are there to train. They're voluntary, you know, voluntarily there, right? In school, the kids are forced to be there, which means a lot of those kids don't want to be there. <clears throat> you all know, you remember, there's a lot of bad, terrible behavior in schools, a lot of bullying, a lot of bad behavior, terrible social skills. You don't want your kids to learn that. But in a place like a jujitsu gym or dojo or whatever you want to call it, it's quite different. Everyone there wants to be there. They are choosing to be there. So I know the, the jiu-jitsu gym my niece goes to, I visited. And the instructor's really good. And everyone there, they're very friendly, but they're also, they're disciplined. They're, there's no bad behavior at all. Not the adults and not the kids. They won't allow it, right? They are there to train and to learn. And if someone comes and they, they start acting like a, you know, an idiot, they, they have to leave. The instructor will kick them out. Goodbye. You can't come here. Right? And so, therefore, it's a super positive, really good social environment for my niece. Very good. And she loves it for that reason. She loves it. So, that's what I would say is, is you can find very positive social environments for your kids outside of school. Much better environments. Okay. Well, I have a couple children that are making noise and I need to go play with them. <laughs> so as I said, join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go to EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Commit. Don't quit. <laughs> Lots of love to you. <laughs> All right. Bye for now. See you tomorrow.